I'm Dana and Happy New Year! I thought I'd start off the year because I had my first little request in the comments which was very exciting for me. No one, no one asks me for things like what do you want to see? Please do let me know. But someone asked if I could talk about PIP and my experience with the application process and the like and um, I've got a lot of thoughts, got a lot of thoughts about PIP and the way that it's all done. So I thought we'd do that today. I've been considering it for a while but I get very paranoid that like the government are gonna watch me if I talk about it. It's ridiculous, they're not. They've got much bigger fucking issues than me chatting shit about Pip. So yeah, let's get into it. One of my main gripes about Pip is that I think it's really inaccessible because every time that I've claimed, which is twice I've had two claims, I've had to phone up and be like, hi, I'd really like to like, get the uh, paperwork to uh, apply for Pip. I'm really terrible with phone calls really terrible. I hate phone calls. So it takes me months to gather up the courage to actually do that. So that's already a first step of like, it's just not accessible for a lot of people. One of my friends is currently applying and I think that they managed to figure out a way to like get it online or something. I've never figured it out. I have no idea how I'd get it online. I've always had to phone up. And then you get sent a gigantic little... <laughs> Like, it seems very, very long as you're going through it, this pamphlet that they send you to talk about all your issues. And it's it's one of them where I'm very understanding of the fact that they've got to make sure people aren't faking. Because as ridiculous as it is, people will do that. But also, for the disabled person, it's really dehumanising and humiliating and just really bloody difficult and tough to have to sit there for hours on end marking out like all the ways that I can't exist as a human adult. Just here's every single way that I fail at something. Here's all the things that I can't do, all the things that show that I'm not good enough and that I can't function properly. And it's, my depression has gotten significantly worse around the end of my claim and when I'm having to fill in the paperwork because you do have to go through and be like, oh, here's how normal people behave, like the neurotypicals, the normal people, versus how I behave and the things I can do. And it's horrible. It's really, truly horrible. And after filling that out and getting doctor's notes and whatever other evidence that you can include, which I think is a great idea, I've included evidence in like paperwork and just whatever I can, whatever I have, every single time I've applied for PIP, which is again twice if I haven't said, and both times I've been told that I got zero points. And bear in mind, this goes through like every aspect of your life. So I'm there, like I can't shower properly unless I'm like prompted to, like someone needs to tell me like, Dan, you need to go shower. And even then I find it very difficult to actually get through the process of a shower. I don't fucking like it. It's really hard. I get lost all the time. I can't read bus like timetables and train timetables. I just show up and hope I'm getting on the right thing. And that's also incredibly, incredibly rare because my anxiety, so I often just don't go out. And even with pages upon pages of all these things, they're like, nah, zero poor, nil poor. It's like watching the UK in Eurovision. <laughs> right, I'm using comedy to get through this because otherwise I would probably cry. Because if the process has been this difficult for me, I dread to think what it's like for a lot of other people, frankly. You know, like I have a great support system. I'm quite, you know, accepting and, and settled with myself, I suppose. Like it doesn't affect me as negatively as it could. But like, I really dread to think how so many other people feel going through this process. You know, you bear your fucking soul to them, essentially. You disclose all the things that you try and hide from everyone all the time so that it looks like you've got your shit together. You fully tell them like, I don't have my shit together. Here's everywhere that I fail and they just tell you that it doesn't count and you've got no points. And you know, little tin foil hat conspiracy theory from me. They reject everyone that hasn't got a physical disability in my opinion. I don't know a single person that's applied for PIP for depression, anxiety, ADHD, autism, any other neurodivergency. I don't know anyone who hasn't been initially refused. And I mean, I doubt it's an awful lot better for those with physical disabilities either, because my mum has quite a few things going on with her that makes it difficult for her to work, it makes it difficult for her to live a life, and they still refuse her the first time around. So I think they're just refusing everyone to see who bothers to come back, quite frankly. Because once you've been refused, you go for your mandatory reconsideration, 
which is when you can write, you can include extra paperwork, you can write them a letter and just explain, here's why I would like you to look over my paperwork again, here's why I want to be reconsidered. The first time that I had that happen, I sent back like a doctor's letter about my depression anxiety because I, I didn't know I was autistic yet the first time I applied. So I'd something like doctor's notes and a little letter being like, I don't leave my house, I don't do anything in my house, I'm incredibly depressed and ridiculously anxious. And they didn't give a shit. <laughs> the second time, I, I'd had enough. I'd had... Okay, here's another little thing. They don't let you reapply for your next claim until the current claim is finished. So there was a point when I'd stopped getting PIP and it was at that moment that I could then reapply for PIP. PIP is the only money that I get and I had to reapply once it had finished, which meant that I had 18 months where I didn't have any money. <laughs> you know, I, I really think that you should be able to reapply towards the end of your claim so that it just resumes where it would have finished otherwise. Like, I'm not asking to get two loads of PIP at once, you know. I don't want two claims going on at once. But it'd be really nice to not have to go a year and a half with a literal zero income, having to depend on everyone around me, when this is something that I'm entitled to and you're just going to back pay it all anyway. But yeah, this time around when it came to my mandatory reconsideration because I got refused, I had had enough. I got my TIE fighter out because I couldn't even be bothered to write because I was like all shaky and anxious. I got my TIE fighter out, I got the paperwork because when they refuse you, they send back like, oh, well, you said this and we say, no, fuck you. We're saying that doesn't happen. We know everything about you in your life and we're saying, nah, mate. So I went through each and every single point they'd made in like opposition to mine, I suppose, and told them why actually they were wrong. <laughs> Like, it's kind of an asshole move. I re really feel quite bad for whoever had to read it. But it's just, it made me so angry to have, again, like I said, bared my soul to them, essentially. Like, here's all the ways that I fail as an adult, in, which I don't want to. I don't want to. I try so hard to make sure people around me think that I've got my shit together. And I've told you all the ways that I don't. And you've come back and said, no, nah, actually, you're all right. <laughs> so I addressed each and every point with, like, I said this originally, you said this, but actually here's why I as the person living my life know that you're wrong. And they just gave it to me. They were like, yeah, fair dues, your claim's back on, lad. And I was like, oh shit, thanks. Because I fully expected to have to go to the um, tribunal again, because that's what happens next. If you don't get your mandatory consideration and you're still like, but I'm entitled to this and I deserve to get it, you go to your tribunal, which is absolutely fucking terrifying. Like, I'm, I'm doing this so that you know what to expect. I'm not trying to put anyone off with this. But if you've got anxiety, it's horrible. You're literally, you go to the building and there's three people there. From my memory, I believe it's like a medical doctor, a lawyer slash like, you know, someone politicky. <laughs> someone and someone that's just like from the council and these three people ask you a shit ton of questions and are basically like, why do you think you deserve money why are you disabled what's wrong with you and then they decide whether or not you get it at the end of that and admittedly like i'm calling it terrifying and being like oh no it's terrible it's not actually that bad i guess you know i only had to go to it the first time i claimed and that was before i knew i was autistic so it was just Lil Anxious being me with my boyfriend, literally sobbing the whole way through and shaking because I was just so anxious and I couldn't... I, I didn't even like the way these people were looking at me, even though they were perfectly nice people. I really want to stress that, like, when I got there, I mean, like I say, I was crying throughout, but I also like, realised, like, these people are taking me seriously. You know, they are listening to me, they are processing what I say. And they are treating me fairly to decide whether or not I am entitled to this money that I'm asking for. Because obviously people do fake shit. I don't know why you would. I think it's absolutely disgusting. But obviously people fake fucking disabilities to try and get a bit of extra cash. And they've got to make sure you're not doing that. So for me, the tribunals very much, they'd be like, oh, okay, Dana, you say here that you can't do this, this or this. Could you expand on that for us? And I'd, you know, speaking through my tears with like ragged breath would explain like, Here's why that's really, really difficult for me, actually. Here's why I'm actually entirely unable to do X, Y, Z. And um, 
I kind of feel like they should have picked up on my autism then, but they didn't. So I just went for anxiety and depression. And at the end of the tribunal, they were like, okay, Dana, we've made our decision. Like, I got sent outside the room so they could make their decision. And when I came back in, they were like, we've made our decision. It's like written on this piece of paper. Here you go. And I read the paper and they'd like said, okay. So I cried even more because this was a year and a half or so after my dad had died. And I'd been a carer for my dad. So I'd gotten like money each week for caring for my dad. So I hadn't had any money in a long time. You know, I hadn't had any sort of income. I was just alive. <laughs> I was, I had the grace of the people around me that I was like, my boyfriend was paying rent and buying food and blah, blah, blah. And that's also how it was for me, the 18 months between that claim ending and my new one being able to start. And I'm also vaguely convinced that the only reason I didn't have to go to tribunal this time was because it was right during lockdown. So once I'd sent back my letter explaining why actually I should be getting it, they were like, oh yeah, fine. We can't have people in. And she's like made a good point here. I assume, I don't know how it all works. So both times I've been given the or I can't remember what it's called. Basically, there's like a daily living expenses pass that you can get. And if you have like a physical disability and need other things, you can also get the mobility aspect of things, which is more money, because it takes more money to live as a person who's disabled. So for me personally, I'm just on like the absolute lowest end of it, as I should be. That's what I am entitled to and it's what's fair. You know, if if you're like in a wheelchair or whatever, you'll probably get more money because you're going to need to use more money to get about and do your life and live independently. But personally, I'm just on the low end of things, which is correct and how it should be. And I think the thing that people really don't appreciate about disability benefits is that they are there because it costs more to be a person with a disability. You know, even if it's not considered a disability, things like anxiety and depression and bipolar and whatever else, they affect your life in ways that cost more money. And I think it can be quite obvious in some ways for those with physical disabilities, because it's like you need a wheelchair, you need, you know, braces or supports or whatever. We can see their accessibility needs and be like, oh, well, they have to pay for that. Yeah, they should get the money. But for those of us that have mental disabilities and mental health issues going on and all of that, it's harder to see what we need the money for, I suppose. So I thought I'd just take a little minute at the end here to talk about how much my life is improved by getting money from the government for being disabled, which I really hate. Um, there's a lot of shame and judgment and crap about people who get money off the government, especially for disabilities. And it does make me quite anxious to upload this, but I, I also think it's really important. I would have absolutely appreciated a video like this while I was trying to claim PIP. So for me, a lot of PIP is useful in the little things, you know, the average person, like sometimes you're going to get takeout, you enjoy it, it's yummy, you're tired that night or whatever, you get in takeout. For someone like me that's autistic, it's a case of like my executive dysfunction is absolutely gone. I haven't eaten anything yet today. And if I don't order takeout, I'm not going to be eating today, which is really bad. But I also don't have the executive dysfunction to get up and figure out what I'm cooking to actually cook the meal, you know? And if my executive function's really screwed up, it's a case of like, yeah, maybe I put a... And if my executive starts... <laughs> and if my executive dysfunction is especially bad, it's a case of like, yeah, I did buy that pizza in that I can just slam in the oven for when I'm having like a bad executive dysfunction day and can't cook. But I put it in the oven and then forgot to set a timer because my executive dysfunction's really bad. And then because I got really absorbed into like my TV show because I'm feeling like crap, so I need my special interest, I completely forgot about the pizza and now it's entirely black. You know, it's things like that where it's like, well, now I, I basically need to order takeout. There's no chance I'm going to eat anything today otherwise. And that's where it can come in really handy. I've gotten very lucky to have it a few times when my partner's paid for me to like get the train somewhere, get the bus somewhere to go and do something. And I've gotten the wrong train or the wrong bus and I've ended up in the completely incorrect place. You know, maybe I need to buy another train ticket. Maybe I need to just get a taxi to wherever I was going. I've got to spend money to figure it out. And this has happened due to being autistic and not being able to understand the timetables and the tra way trains and buses work and everything. So I have to get the taxi or the extra train ticket. And my pit pays for that. That's how I can be independent. Because if I didn't have that money, it'd be like, well, I've screwed up and now I'm going to have to sit here and cry until I figure out how to get home again. I don't know. I don't know what I would have done. I probably wouldn't have gone for the fear of I'm going to get the wrong thing and not be able to get home. 
Whereas now I can go out and do the occasional thing because I've got the fallback of like, if I need another train ticket, I can buy another train ticket. If I need to just get a taxi to where I'm going, I can just get a taxi to where I'm going. And of course, Pip's also like, it's not affected by you working. Whether or not you work does not have any incline, incline, inclination. It has no effect on whether or not you can get Pip, whether you work. And obviously that means that occasionally I do manage to get a little job, we've talked about this. And it means that like, for example, the first day that I was meant to be working at Comic-Con, I was breaking it. I was terrified. And that meant that everything I did that morning just seemed to take way longer than it was supposed to. And I was so stressed and I was so anxious and it was just taking forever. So when I was like, oh, I'm meant to be going to get the train right now and if I don't leave right now I'm gonna miss it and get there late but I can't leave right now because I've still got xyz to do I could just get a taxi I could take that little bit of stress off myself that little bit of anxiety and go, okay I don't need to leave for another 40 minutes if I get a taxi so I've got 40 minutes to do this thing that was only going to take 15 anyway and then I can relax a little and take some breaths and then go. And I imagine for those that are in, you know, regular work, that's going to be really useful and necessary and helpful. Because God knows, I, I can't go to a job every fucking day anyway. You may as well have the little bit of help that you can if you're doing it. You know, and I think there's a million little costs to being autistic that people don't think about, you know. I buy certain types of clothes because of the feel of them, the sensory issues that I have. I buy certain types of bulbs because of my sensory issues, certain types of food, we all have a little food obsessions. We all have that hyperfixation that we've gotten a little bit too into and then spent a little bit too much money on when we shouldn't have. And that kind of covers me for that. You know, and I'm not saying I'm like going out and like blowing it up with Doctor Who merch, but if I do get really obsessed with something, I'm like, I need to like own this on DVD or have this thing from it. I can usually get the thing and not have to like obsess over it for six months. You know, and as much as I complain about the process, because it's not good enough for disabled people, we shouldn't have to dehumanise ourselves and humiliate ourselves and feel like absolute shit to get some money we're entitled to because they want to make sure we're not faking it or some shit. We shouldn't have to go through that. And I think it's absolute bollocks. But also, I'm really, really, really glad that there's a benefit available like this because I can't work at the minute. I really struggle to get any sort of job and then I fuck it up and can't fucking do it. So I would be getting zero money. I would have zero income. I would have to just sit in my house and do nothing all day and never buy anything. And you know, that would fucking suck. So as much as I don't think the process is good enough, I really fucking appreciate that it's available and that I, I, I get it, that I'm entitled to it, that it's there for me. And you know, I don't think that there should be shame talking about benefits, especially ones that are required and especially like disability benefits. But I still feel really bad talking about it and saying that I get it, which is silly. Cause I've never judged anyone else for telling me they get it. I'm always like, yeah, good for you. You're entitled to it. You may as well. So I don't know why I'm so shitty on myself about it, but there you have it. So yeah, that's sort of my experience with Pip, I suppose. If you want to know anything more specific, if you have any like certain questions, please do leave them down below. But I'm not an expert. I don't really know what I'm talking about. This is all experience based. So please don't be asking like how to get Pip because I don't, I don't know. I've, I've struggled to get it for myself. I can't help with like very specific things. But if you've got any general questions, I'll do my best to answer them. If you've got any other little things that you'd like to see me talk about, you know, if there's any topics you'd like brought up here, please do let me know. I'm not quite running out of things to talk about, but I, I've got a lot of topics where I'm just like, is it only me that cares about this? Will other people give a shit? And obviously like, I wanna make content I enjoy, but I also want it to be stuff that you guys actually find useful now that I have people that seem to regularly watch me. <laughs> you know, I want you guys to find it useful and enjoy it too, not just me i want us all to have a good time so if you've got any requests let me know and in the meantime i hope whoever you are wherever you are you're having a lovely morning evening day afternoon week month year yaz is gay all is good and i'll see you again in a few days <laughs>